Um, so I haven't actually had a chance to watch these films yet myself, um, but the first of them is um, a Wangan and Jagalingu film um, about their struggle um, against Adani and their struggle for sovereignty. Um, so this one will go for nearly three minutes um, and I'll just start playing it for you now. I'm on Wang and Jagalingu country. Sorry. And custom. Sorry. Yes. Peter is not sharing. I don't know what happened. Ah. You're not sharing the, the screen. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, I must have missed a step. Okay, I shall try that again. Sorry, everybody. I'll start that film again. No, yes, yes, good. I'm on Wang and Jagalingu country. Our rights to our law and custom and culture has been handed down from generation to generation. It's important for us to maintain that customary law so that uh, our young people will learn respect. And once they have respect for each other and our law and custom, they will also have respect for land and the law of the land. Our presence is our strength, and our strength is our culture and our connection to our land. My name is Nathan Byra. Um, I'm here with the family. Uh, we are here um, doing Watama, Corbury. As you can see, all the family's getting ready. Uh, it's a beautiful day for it. So about 100 metres that way, uh, there is the, the road where the truck goes to, well, all the trucks go to the dining camp. Um, but we are here inside the foot, um, doing cultural, um, cultural activities with all the family. grandmother comes from here, they belong to the water people. We're just near the Gungawal Springs. So we're here occupying our homelands, protecting our territory, and maintaining our cultural rights, and practicing our law and custom. And this is our homeland. This is where our old people have walked and talked and sung on this country here for thousands of years. We're here with our family. We're the ones that uh, hold our cultural sovereignty and uh, practice our law and custom. Hi again, everyone. Sorry for that. I'm still working out some of the technical tricky things. Um, I'll now introduce um, the second short um, video for this evening, which is about the Jukum Gorge um, and Rio Tinto. Um, I think that one goes for, let me just see, about uh, five minutes. 
five minutes. So let me just see if I can share my screen again. Get this one up. We're standing in front of the Jugan Gorge cave that is being dated back to 46,000 years old. Um, these caves have just recently been destroyed by Rio Tinto. This is one of the caves that you can see visually. This is the Jugan 1 cave. Further to the left is the Jugan 2 cave. It's completely covered by the gravels and that after the detonations. This cave he named after my old grandfather. Yeah, you got a bulgira there. This one we try to preserve for our old people and our younger ones. What they done here is wrong. They took a lot of our heritage away. We done a hard work over years. Nearly six years more. What they done here, they took everything away from the people. No good hurt people is destroying a people's country heritage. I just don't know how to really explain how I feel because we've lost a hell of a lot of connection to this area. Very heartbreaking, I can say that. When we used to come out on country surveying and all that, we were so proud to come out, to walk on our country and, and just feel so happy being out here. But I've come back today and I don't feel like I did back then. When I got there this morning, like coming out in the bus as well, I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. I didn't realize how much our country's being destroyed. I bring my boys and show them. My two sons. Show them their great grandfather's country, their grandfather's country. And you feel happy bringing them. Now all we got is a mess. Well, the first time I came here, it was natural, untouched, green, prestige. Now I come in here, it's, it's like looking at a dump. It's the feeling is like, it's not that feeling that I had before. It's, it's very upsetting. A lot of spiritual had been living here for many, many years. I mean, now it's been disturbed where they're gonna go, you know? This is a lot to us. The Purugundi Gurama people have had connection to this area way beyond 46,000 years, and then Rio goes and destroy it. They say they didn't know about all this. They knew. They knew. With what has happened, and this is how I feel, I would never ever trust Rio again. Never. We did have a mutual trust before, yes. Um, we had a good engagement with the Rio Tinto right up till the May, tw May 2020, till we heard that our precious site, Jogan, has been destroyed. Um, five years now, we've come back to the very same place and seeing a place like this is quite disturbing. Our heritage law need to change. That's the main one. Country belong to people. And it's getting destroyed. Floor grounds, everything. Burial sites. Everything. Don't let this happen. Never let this happen. Don't trust the people you put the trust to. Make them work hard for the trust. Otherwise, you finish up like it's nothing.
broken down, eh, Keith? Oh, dear. Sorry, everyone, I'm still a bit new to this, the tech side of things. Um, so the third short video um, that we've got tonight is um, about the Gomorrah's people struggle. Um, and that one go, this one will go for um, about seven minutes um, and then we'll finally get on to um, the Pilliga film. Not up for sale, and neither are we. It's just ruined ruin the system and also ruin the environment and it's also ruining our hearts it's making us sick inside and you know we can't we we can't let them keep doing it our great sacred site which is the great artesian you know it goes from the top all the way down and we have to protect water protect water and country but protect water for future generations naturally up out of the ground is dozens if not hundreds around this whole, whole area and it's all great artesian basin. Look at the landscape, what's it telling you? So this in all likelihood would have been the natural flow of the street. Is that the flow? Yeah, that is nice. It does too. There's a lot of social issues that affect us and that's the Indigenous peoples across the world. But all the research says that the thing that's going to bring those generations back into a place where they're proud people, where they uh, are in society and they're not the, they're not the, um, the marginalised demographics of societies across the world, was to bring them back to culture. So what we're seeing now that could happen out in the Pilliga is the destruction of the visible representations of our culture. <laughs>
they're actually referred to as gear. So many of them around Gumroy country where they've been recorded, or this is Giga Boar, which is up past Moree or over towards Gunnado. What they're actually talking about is, is a heart. And that's a Gumroy word for heart. If you put poison directly into your heart, then that's ultimately going to spread to everything and poison everything through your circulatory system. Which is again the ideology that we can look at doing something so significant that, that literally attacks the heart, the hearts of country, without guarantee its safety, then why does why is is is, is, is that even being considered? mob are up to. We don't trust them. They don't think like us that, at all. But what it is, it's colonialism. You show me one community in Australia that is rich from this um, in colonialism. You show me one place where we, we are thriving and we ain't dying. Show me one place in Australia where we're, where we're able to survive and we're enjoying life. I don't think there is any. I don't think there is any. You know? We don't want their money. We just want clean air. Want to be able to sit around with our families, enjoy food, have a good laugh, have a little argument there and then come back and sit down and have another feed. And do it all over again. Family and friends together, you know. We want to live together in peace, don't you? I think it's about time, you know, we, we peace came to this country. I'll get out of the way. She's a singer, not me, so I'll just be out of the Um, before I play the main film, I just thought I'd check um, that it's all working okay for everyone here on this session. Um, thank you for watching this video. You can just click the little chat now. Before I <laughs> Sorry, Fed, I cannot hear you. Oh, I just said um, if anyone has any issues that the videos aren't working properly or anything, to let us know in the main chat. Just before I put the main film on. Okay, I'll assume everything's going okay. Um, I'll put the main film on now. Um, I think it goes for about an hour and a half. Um, I'm not sure exactly how long, sorry. Um, but yeah, I'll be around at the end if anyone um, wants to chat. Um, yes, um, I'll get Lucho to pop up the links to um, the three videos. Maybe um, someone's just asked about getting the links to the videos in the film. Um, I know that it's being recorded, so it should be available afterwards. But if possible, um, Lucho or Marisol, it might be good to pop the, um, the links in here as well. Um, in the meantime, I'll start playing um, the main film.
the Pilliger has protected us since the beginning of time. It provides everything we need and to be able to respect that and connect to that is really important. And I think that's why a lot of community are really fighting against mining in this area because they've been able to be here and see what it can provide for them and see the beauty that they get to be surrounded and protected by. This is where we choose to bring our kids up. We've got space, you know, the kids are involved in all facets of the farming operation, particularly with the animals, and it's just the, the greatest place in the world to bring up kids. The fact that just this Narrabri project is the start with six more gas fields penciled in, it's just plain scary. This is not an argument about farm businesses. This is an argument about communities. How exactly do you expect to put this pipeline through where basically you're going to have direct action there put by farmers and local community members, Aboriginal groups all coming together to prevent this coming through? Because basically, as part of bringing the army with you, there's no chance of you coming through this community. If we've got legal rights to do something and people are going to uh, resist us, um, how are we going to do that in the law? I think that'll be a, an issue not just for us. It'll be an issue for government, it'll be an issue for uh, law enforcement agencies. Coal seam gas is like a cloud hanging over every person involved. I think the only person who are in favour of it are the ones who will benefit in one or the other way. But people who love the Pilliger would never ever trade it in for money. The people in the industry, they're hurting us. They're really hurting other human beings by forcing something on the nature, but nature really doesn't want. The nature itself can't cope, and if you can listen and feel it, it is very obvious that we have to stop hurting each other. Unfortunately, governments have already enacted that they can't be held responsible for any of their decisions that they make. Well, we can always blacken your eye with the truth and we can always take the companies on. They haven't got an excuse. They know the problem. But they're running from it and they've fooled others to believe that there is no problem. So that way, I'm going to hold you accountable for what you've done if anything goes wrong in the future. And I expect the public to do the same. I came here with the purpose to have a peaceful, quiet, enjoyable retirement, a place that I could call home, but also as a base to go out and enjoy myself with my wife. So we then bought this place. At the end of 2006, I really started to take notice of the gas industry up here. 2006 is when my first bull went down. They'd had a fracking event down the forest. My bull, the next day when we fired it up, virtually no water came out of it. So I then got onto Eastern Star Gas and tried to talk to them. Just drew a complete another blank. It's not us, it's all yours. Officer Water didn't want to care about it. Nobody cared about it. We drilled another bore in 2008. We then equipped the bore in 2010 when eventually the pumps in the old one failed. We were using that water up until 2012 out of the new bore, and it was beautiful water. When Santos bought Eastern Star Gas out, I went straight over to the water place. I said, will you come out and test my water? And there was nothing wrong with that stage. And they said, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll be right. Yeah, we'll come out. We'll, uh, no problems. We'll come out and test your water for you. And as coincidence has it, 10 days before they turned up, my ball went belly up and started to issue foul-smelling water out of it. There was a lot of ants in it, and this water was thick with them. And the only way that can happen is that they've been snuffed out, gassed out. So anyway, they took their sample away. They could smell the hydrogen sulphide. We heard nothing back from them, and then eventually after... 
I rang them a few times and sent them a few emails. They came out here and he said, look, Tony, he said, I've got a letter for you here. And he handed me the letter written by Santos, which acknowledges they did a water test. However, the results indicated that the water was not suitable for domestic consumption and that I shouldn't use it for that purpose. Anyway, he said, look, we can help you out with water if you, if you need it. We can deliver water to you. They've never come back. And we've never got any water from them. So we've been living on rainwater ever since. There's no rain in the moment, so we have to cut water in. And the fact that we have to cut water in make us realize what is the future? How can we preserve this place and how can we make a living here? I came from Germany in late 70s. We traveled as tourists in Australia. We purchased the farm then as a backpacker. The one aspect of moving to this area here was the expect to have freedom. And out of this freedom, we created Piliga pottery. Piliga is um, the name um, from this forest around us and the pottery, uh, we call the Piliga pottery because we love the Piliga so much. And we thought, you know, it's great to have a property in this surrounding and that was for us the reason we bought that because it belongs to the people of Australia. We live now with three generations and that is myself, my son and his wife Regina with their two kids. Uh, so that made us three generations and my son and my daughter presently living here at Bacala as well. We employ people and also host volunteer people as well. So it's a very multicultural group who come and live as an extended family where everyone can contribute to shape the place and also to make it comfortable for our lifestyle. They call it the jewel in the Piliga. My wife and I, Ro, we came out here in about 2003 and started to put a bit of this country together and this is where we've called home since then and, yeah, this is our part of the world. We do a bit of dry land cropping, about 2,000 acres of dry land cropping and the rest is grazing in this river country here that you can see. I can tell you just on our little postage stamp, just our little neck of the woods, like in 2016, we grew 10 and a half million serves of chickpeas here and uh, we grew enough barley to then go and play a direct role in the production of five and a half million serves of beef. And I was doing that on one day a week. And if we can do that on our little patch, what are the neighbours doing? You know, what's the region doing in that macroeconomic space? You want a kingdom? The proposed pipeline at this point is to connect the Narrabri gas project to the Moomba pipeline. We're looking at going 1.2 metres right underneath my backside. And to do that in country like this, it, it just does not make sense. We've got our highly erodible vertisol soils that are just not going to stand up when, you know, you can see here, we're in flood country here. On the table right now is the proposal to drill the 850 wells over the 95,000 hectares. And that is just the start. We're looking at licenses that cover the Liverpool Plains. We've got the exploration licenses that cover our part of the world. And we're just not buying that that's it. This is going to be massive.
one thing that proponents of the coal seam gas industry would have you believe is that, you know, the wishes, the feelings of farmers and individual community members are, are not significant. Well, 96% of people, over 3.2 million hectares, are opposed to coal seam gas. We're against coal seam gas. Why did that many people vehemently oppose this issue? We're communities. We have been here for a very long time. The fact that my family's been here since 1905, I mean, that inhales in significance to our Indigenous mates who have been here, you know, for eternity. I'm a Gamilaroi woman from Coonabarabra in New South Wales. My connection to country goes way further back than myself. My grandfather was Bill Robinson. He was a leader and elder in this community. When he passed away, it really left a hole in our family and our community. I got used to having him not in, you know, our own family life anymore, but then started to realise the effects that that was having on community and the gap that it left in knowledge and connection and understanding how important his role was as an elder. and I worried for the generations that would miss out on the wonderful cultural upbringing that I'd had. Rather than waiting for somebody to come along, I thought, it's, it's up to me. I'm the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Projects Officer for Arana Arts. I came into this role with the idea of how can I create a voice for my generation to take control of the country's narrative. I was able to develop a program called CETA, which stands for Contemporary Environment, Technology and Arts. I like to think of CETA with the young kids, like the cameras and the drones and whatnot is like the honey, and they come in because that's the language they understand. And by the end of it, they're practising culture, they're understanding culture because it's being delivered in a way that makes sense to them at this point in time. It gives the opportunity for younger artists and younger people to actually get on country, listen to the stories that are existing, but also be making stories as they're here and creating the next generation of narrative within this space so that when they come here as elders themselves, they'll talk about what they've been taught, but they'll also talk about what they've done. Maya Molly. Everybody's been really inspired by coming here, I think, because it's such a unique place and it feels so untouched. And you can see our ancestors all over it and that's really special and really helps people to understand the meaning of connecting to country and seeing yourself within it. concentrate on your ring presence now. Keep those eyes above the spine all the time. That's it. You're getting closer to the money. Bound together by the salts that were spilled on this area. <coughs> and there's the, there's the salts. There's the nuclear salts. And that's what these kill sides did, the, 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 the produce fluid did, it just turned everything into a almost rock. It's our responsibility to take care of humanity. Together we share this land because we are all family. Teach our children of the old ways, keep them strong, keep it maintained. Showing our children right and wrong, the meaning of culture, how to keep it strong. Now we have a new generation. about it is, is is when it gets wet really wet <laughs> you bog up to your ankles walking through it so and when it dries out it just goes like that 
And that's all the way down to the clay barrier. So job one, calm him down, get him relaxed. Job two, then balance him and set him. <laughs> He's had enough, I think. That's good, mate. <laughs> well done, buddy. This is known as the southern recharge of the Great Artesian Basin. Rainfall occurs, hits the ground, gets naturally filtered out by the trash on the surface initially, then the soils down below. The trees here are the important thing that holds this whole system together. They also put their roots down through the clay barrier and allow the water to enter deeper down. They are the lungs of the area. We keep knocking it all down. We're not going to have any lungs left. We're not going to have anything to convert our CO2s to something we can breathe. I'm not against mining, but it must be done in respect to three key things. It must be done with respect to the environment. It must be done with respect to the rules, laws and regulations of the country or the state and the area where you're working in. And it must be done with respect to the people in the area where you're going to operate. Welcome everyone for travelling, particularly those who've come from afar. APA proposed to build a pipeline across our Shire. We have us doing our thing on the top We've got our wonderful Great Artesian Basin underneath us. And down below that, there's these coal seams where they want to get this gas out of. Now, they've got to drill through our water to get to these coal seams, pour down a heap of toxic chemicals, blow the bejesus out of it, and flush it with ridiculous quantities of water, um, then pull it all back up, uh, purify the gas, and then farm the waste off to some poor sod. I've asked myself... Should we just roll over and get out of the way? Are we making a kerfuffle? Are we, you know, are we just being a little bit alarmist? We have a track record of coal seam gas, not just in Queensland, but right through the US. And that track record stinks in terms of environmental outcomes, in terms of impacts on farmers, and most importantly, in terms of the impacts on communities and people's health. If we do nothing, Canamble will be a gas field. Our water will be irreversibly poisoned. And our community and our children will pay. So um, we've got a golden opportunity now to fire up, to get in the face of these guys and to say, no, bugger off, we don't want it. We have to look at how we value our resources and where we rank our resources in terms of value to, to society, you know, Australia-wide, worldwide. And if water doesn't start taking a higher peg over fossil fuels, it's just complete insanity. We can operate without fossil fuels. We're certainly getting there if we're not there already, but we can't operate without water. Tell me someone that can operate without water. Makala has got two active bores presently, and one bore ceased, so there's no water anymore, and the other bore is very afraid to pump too much out of it, so we are very conservative. Now we have to really rethink in how we structure. You know, one opportunity is to have more dams and bring more tanks in, so what our future will be that we have to learn to manage much more water, to save it and treat it as it is gold.
Pilliga is such a high drought region and that still flourishes and provides everything we need. To look at this area as just bush is definitely really misleading. It's actually more of a safe haven for animals, for people, both in the past and today. The magic in the Pilliga is that everything is in a really lovely balance and that's why it works for people, why it works for farmers, why it works for practising culture, why it works for communities to live a bit more sustainably here. It's, it's in a perfect order that works. So it is very scary to think about that balance being thrown out and the same respect and use of the land not connecting with how we've all done it, Indigenous and non-Indigenous now, for a long time. I was brought up with culture and music where home comes close to myself, you know, and sharing that with my beautiful community is nothing nicer than be able to do that, you know, to, to share that. And we all have the same feeling in the same moment. And nothing is nicer than holding hands or feeling embraced by, by love. It is my great pleasure to introduce to you the founder of Pillicott Pottery, who came to this place where there was nothing but a lot of gum trees, uh, brought uh, immense dreams and vision, hours and years of hard work. Ladies and gentlemen, Maria Rickett. <laughs> years I tried and have created art and culture around myself because it is so good for my soul and my heart can speak and I can breathe and this is a special moment because I believe in the power of art and culture and this inspires and motivates people to do something I want to promote and share this with you my community my beloved community what better way than that to experience opera under the stars? Campbell Show has a major role for the youth of the town and the community. They get a day off school and they can come together with a, with a common interest and connect. It really enriches the fabric of our little community. Everybody get surprised. Competing for the $200. Through my involvement in the Show Society movement, I'm lucky enough to have mentored and trained kids for a few years now. And at the moment in particular, working with a couple of guys, Mitch and a young girl, Marnie, we work on showing cattle. It doesn't matter what it is. It, it, it really, it, it could be two unit belly dancing. It, it doesn't matter. The important skills behind that, uh, you know, are those transferable employability skills and the connections that they'll make. Come on. With that comes considerable responsibility in terms of animal welfare and animal ethics. And we need to make sure that those kids are able to, A, do it themselves, but it B, also mentor other people on how to ethically deal with animals and have animals involved in their lifestyle or their business, but also be accountable in the way that they do that. With the coal seam gas industry, that choice will be taken away from our kids. You know, everything that we do here is about providing a choice. We don't expect them to take, you know, to take the farm on, um, you know, when we're when we're old and crotchety and, and going to be wheeled around or, or we're six foot under. 
but we damn sure want them to have that choice. And I don't think it's fair that anybody can come in um, to our kids and say they can't have that choice um, because, you know, we've lived here and worked hard here for many generations and I just, you know, for such a short-term exploitive industry to come in here and say that for 30 years of gain, if they get that, it's wrong. My hands give everything, but when I see old people's hands, you know, they even lived longer and they gave much more. They gave work to the land, they gave cuddlings to their children, they picked people up when they were falling down, and they fought in wars. These hands did everything. And I trust these people with their hands. And I love these people in my community. I love the women who shaped you, know, the, the women who go to the to the women's associations, the, the people who go to the churches, you know, the people who form the community, they hold everything together. And I give my hand, I give my work, you know, and help these people fighting with fighting together against coal seam gas. You know, in my heart I will fight against it, is my work I will fight against it, against it, and I will speak against it. There's something really healthy in having a voice. Being instrumental in connecting people to country that have led me through my entire life, and that's really special. So being able to take that back to them and show them and have them be a part of that management to really help them carry out their roles as well. So it's really important that we serve our elders to the best of our abilities. There are knowledge keepers, and if we want to know that knowledge and be elders one day, we need to make sure we take care of them and do the right thing while we can. Those mountains we've seen... Mm. Right, was the caves there? Yes. Yeah. There's caves in there. Yeah. Right. yeah. I'm too old now to climb up there and check it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll see the caves in the caves. <laughs> well, that's what I hope to do with um, getting our young people to use this technology so they can take you in there. So mm. you can bring it out and show you and help mm. make yeah. sense of it all. Oh, that'd be lovely. We should definitely stop coal seam gas in the Pilliga because we need to care more about ourselves. We need to realise that there is a disconnect between us and that kind of growth and investment because it doesn't take care of us um, long term, both in the environments we want to live safely and also spiritually as well. We should all be caring for each other and what affects one will eventually affect all. So investing in others and investing in other communities in the long term is investing in yourself. There's been a number of spills through the forest, but a lot of them not recorded. What we see lying down here in this kill area here is 90% of the trees that were standing that died. That's to the top end of the kill area, and that doesn't look too bad. But you look to the northeast, and the rehabilitation is up the putty. I have over 500 gigabytes worth of video and photographs taken of the forest over my time here, as well as around about 15 hours of videotape that has to be yet fully downloaded. And that's only the tip of the iceberg of what I've got in there. I have been bringing examples to the gas companies and to the governments regarding the problems of gas since 2006. I've been trying to run a property here and make it pay for slightly longer than that. In 2017, late February, two days after Santos released its EIS,
I threatened suicide. The comment made by our local member stated on a radio program that this Narrabri gas project would go ahead with only minor changes to the information contained in the EIS. Coupled with all the strains and the stresses and knockbacks that I'd had just pushed me over the edge. It's affected my relationship with my wife. As a token to my wife about moving on, I got rid of the flock that we'd sort of bred on this place here. We got good wool, we got a good return. They became part of the family. I'm now left with only three. Two are blind and one has got one eye only and she looks after the others. I think if I got rid of those three sheep, I think it would strike home that I've everything I had dreamed about in my retirement has been taken away. So um, while, I, while ever they're still here, they're still giving me that connection, really deep connection and sense of purpose to what I wanted to do during my retirement. I'm torn between right now, leaving, selling up and going today and staying to see this battle through with the gas. Yeah, that's, I don't know what else to say. Except that I'm not, except I'm going to be honest, I'm going to see it through. Be on record, I am not letting you on my place. I will stand firm with my community and I will do whatever it takes to stop this pipeline and I will not be engaging with you again and don't misunderstand that as any willingness to let yourselves in because there will be big trouble if it does and I've had enough, I'm going home because I can't put up with the nonsense anymore. Yamandai, Yamandai, Kamilaro, Wolabaga, Niani, Winangala, Yalamu Mare, Maramala, Ndwal, Nale, Tuan, Ira Gabagagan, Kigi, Janal, Niani. Welcome everyone, you are on Gamilaroi country. Think of the ancestors, respect the elders, care for the land. If we all work together, we will make a better future. Dreams and broken hearts. Running on empty moons and sleep. Oh, it's true I've earned these cracks upon my feet. Walk away, oh, let you know. Walk away, no, you're wrong. Walk away, no, you're wrong. And I've seen people holding on to something.
<laughs> what a really compelling movie. I know that I was particularly moved uh, almost to tears at some point with some of those uh, testimonies there. Thank you so much for everything. Hi everyone. Sorry, I'm just getting my video back up. Hi everyone, I hope that worked okay. Um, I don't think Lucho put the link to those films like everybody asked earlier, um, but they will be available, um, I think, on the um, conference website. Um, and this, yeah, was recorded. So the recording of this session should be available um, later afterwards as well. Um, thanks everyone for, yeah, sticking around for those short films and this film. Um, and yeah, keep in mind that there's um, some more sessions on over the weekend. Um, so tomorrow, some sessions. And then on Sunday, I know that there's a visioning panel um, on in the morning that I'm really excited about. Um, so yeah, keep a look out for the, um, the rest of the sessions um, over the weekend. Um, and yeah, I hope you all have a good night. <laughs>